Well, hello everybody. Uh, I'm listening to some music. Uh, I haven't made any videos for some time, but I haven't had, really had the time for it. But that doesn't mean that I haven't had any new records in my collection. Right now, I'm listening to this nice budget LP, Brahms Symphony Number no. Four in E Minor, Boston Symphony Orchestra, Charles, conducted by Charles Monk. Which is lower the low the sound a bit. There. Um, if this is I found a pile of uh, these uh, reissues, late seventies reissues on the uh, Red RCA Camden Classics label. But the recordings are old RCA recordings from the fifties and sixties. I'm not entirely sure which year this is from, but. Uh, probably the 60s or early 60s, I think. Anyway, um, uh, I'm not going to show you any more of these uh, uh, Camden Classic issues. They are not that fantastic, but they are, contain very nice music and nice recordings. But I'm going to show you some of the latest acquisitions uh, in my record collection. Uh, first, I apologize if I already showed you this, because I can't really remember whether I showed it in the last or second to last video, because I've had it for some time, um, and I can't be bothered watching it. But I got this box some time ago, uh, Credence Clearwater Revival, the singles collection, and it contains, I think, 15, or is it 16, um, singles. Um, and we have a very nice little booklet here. Uh, I, I think I think it's from 2009. Uh, 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 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15 singles. One of them is a promotion single with uh, not that much of musical interest, but otherwise I think it's their main singles. All of them reissued, including the first uh, Scorpio single, uh, Porterwill, that I think they recorded uh, under their old name, The Gollywogs. Anyway, it's a very nice box and uh, the singles sound great. And I've always seen uh, Creedence Clearwater Revi Revival as a single band. I mean, I have all their albums, but I can't say that I really want to listen to a full Creedence album. I, I prefer listening to these singles. And so. Nice reissue, and it's very well made, and does really look very nice too, I mean, so. Um, <coughs> I got a nice bunch of interesting, well, more or less interesting vinyl singles. Uh, many of them, I will show you, that won't have that interesting uh, cover art, because, well, they were just released with company sleeves. Um, but there's a main theme in this pile. It's uh, Jonathan King, the English m music maker um, who started his own record company, UK Records. It stands for United King in, in uh, 1972 and released a bunch of different um, singles <laughs> using all kinds of various um, pseudonyms like, uh, well, uh, the pig Piglets, 50. The three and a third, a uh, hundred ton and a feather, bubble rock. Mm, well, so <laughs> when he signed the the group 10CC, some people actually actually thought, well, that's another Jonathan King pseudonym, but it wasn't. Anyway, this is Sloply Bellywell with Summer Concerto, and if you want to be happy, this from 1974 um, with the right company sleeve and the blue UK label. Um, comp one of the compositions, some concerto, is um, Jonathan King, and I'm, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm quite sure if this is Jonathan King. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, then we have here Bubble Rock, I Can't Get No Satisfaction, a country and western treatment of, of uh, the Rolling Stones hits, and on the flip side it's uh, Bubble Rock is here to stay. And uh, um, I've got the LP Bubble Rock is here to stay some you know, many years ago, so 
um, very odd versions of different old rock and roll classics. Uh, this is Reggae by The Piglets and Blanket Coverage by The Piglets, also in the UK. Their, main, their most famous uh, song is, of course, Johnny Reggae, uh, a singer that I wish I had, but I, had, I haven't got hold of it yet, but I'm sure I will find it sooner or later. Uh, the Piglets, well, that's Jonathan King as well. Then we have Sound 9418 by with In The Mood. It's the old swing classic by Glenn Miller. Um, instrumental, a bit of a Caribbean treatment of uh, the swing classic. And when I heard this, I had, a laugh, had to laugh. I've never heard this version before, but I've heard the arrangement because um, it was almost copied note by note by the Swedish dance band Ingmar Nusströms that I've talked about many times. And they had a bit of a hit in Sweden with this. But I've never heard this uh, version. Uh, it's, it's really great, really great. Uh, all those were, were, were um, English pressings. This is German pressing, I think. A uh, hundred ton and a feather. It only takes a minute and last June, this June. Uh, with the silver embossed label. Uh, this is a German issue from 1976. Then we have Chicka Boom, Chicka Boom, with 53rd and a third featuring the sound of Shag. <laughs> well, it's this is also a German issue, and of course, it's Jonathan King. Then we have a group that, well, I, I, Jonathan King, I guess, is the producer, but I don't think he really played on that, but three singles with the, the group The First Class. We have here Beach Baby and Both Sides of the Story. We have Bobby Dazzler and Lavender Man and Dreams of Ted a Penny and Long Time Gone. Um, one thing about Jonathan King, uh, he was in prison for a couple of years for well, I, I'm some sort of sexual assault back in the 1980s. Um, I'm, I'm not an expert on this, but I thought it was... The little I've read, I found it a bit dodgy, the accusations, I mean. And uh, so I, I really don't know what to think. And when I first heard it, I was really aghast that a uh, musician and, and music entrepreneur that I admire so much could be involved in such a thing. Um, so for, for a couple of years I really couldn't really listen to Jonathan King but I feel now well of course he's done his time and he's back out there and he can even make fun of such a horrible situation uh, that's, and that's quite amazing um, so I, I think it's time to bring out this these uh, UK records uh, and playing them and play them again because it's, it's I think they are in some senses uh, magically good. All right, I think that was the last. Oh yeah, no, we have we have a couple more here. Yeah, Pat Cod, a warm friend, and Harry of the Hula Hoops. I think Jonathan King is quite involved in this too. Maybe just as a producer, not really sure. Uh, and that. Carl Malcolm, Fatty Bum Bum, <laughs> and uh, Bum, no, this is a skin, flesh, and bones, Bum Bum situation. Yeah, well, he, he, well Jonathan King is involved, but uh, Carl Malcolm was uh, is not the same person as Jonathan King, although you may <laughs> suspect that. Uh, right here we have uh, an American. Elton John single uh, from 1974, Losing the Sky with the Diamonds and One Day at the Time. Not sure about the label. It, this uh, sky blue label was mainly used in the 1980s, so I'm not sure where they, uh, at least on vinyl albums, so I'm not really sure when they started using this in, in um, if, if, the, if they started using it at the same time on the singles. If so, this is some sort of reissue from the 80s. Then I found this Rockabilly Classic, and some of you may be able to tell me if this is some sort of reissue as well. It's uh, Rick Rickles, I'm Gone, and You Gotta Go Away. 
and it's on the Bishop Records label with record number 1001. Looks like this. <laughs> now over to the uh, novelty records. We have uh, Andrew Sachs, the great, great actor uh, who played Manuel. Uh, well, he's done lots of things, but this is actually a single with Manuel as a spin off from the Faulty Tower series. Uh, his version of uh, Joe Dolce's uh, music theater is Shut Up Your Face. And uh, on the flip side, there's a song called Waiter, There's a Flea in My Soup. And it's on the Elton John label. Well, ro the rec Rocket Record. The Rocket Record Company. I think that's a Elton John's label. <coughs> Pardon. Okay, we have the Swedish. Well, actually, she was born in Finland, but she, she's been active in Sweden all her career. Lil Linfors and uh, an EP from 1966 with uh, her most famous song, Du Ende, which is, um, well, it's, what's it called in English? Romance d'amour, or well, well, that's French, rather, from 1966 and uh, um, great EP. Then we have from the 80s, Mr. Elvis Costello, Man Out of Time on F Beat. Um, over to the next, this is a real cult uh, single. It's David Rose and his orchestra playing The Stripper. Yeah, you know. Da, 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 da. Well, I can't really sing The Stripper while they're playing Brahms here. So. Uh, uh, from 1962, although I think this is a reissue from maybe the late 60s or early 70s, because I don't think this. MGM label was the one being used back in 1962. I don't think so. <coughs> okay, we have an American uh, pressing of a Manfred Mann single. There's a man, and my name is Jack Mercury um, from 1968. And we have some EPs. Oops, sorry. Box fell over. Uh, we have George Shearing Quintet with Billy Eckstein and Teddy King on MGM. Uh, taking a chance on love, you're driving me crazy, I wish on the moon, and it's easier to remember with this nice yellow MGM label. It is a British issue actually, I see that now. Right. Uh, then we have some. These are some. All these. All of these singers I found for almost nothing. Then we have <clears throat> nice, easy listening. I'm not really into this, but I have to say I like the sleeve a lot. Wayne King in High Five with J Wayne King and his orchestra on American Decker. Uh, then we have Riverboat Riverboat Five, New Orleans Dance State, looking like this on Mercury from the 50s. Oh yeah, and then we have Ray Charles, Come Live With Me and Everybody Sing. This is from 1973 and it's a German London. That sounds really weird to say, a German London. What about an uh, um, English Berlin? No. Uh, on London, on the crossover label and I listened to this, I really like this, but then um, Ray Charles was a genius. Okay, over to some records that I paid a bit more for, uh, some record store day issues. I'm not really that active during the record store day because I, I rarely have the time or the money to uh, go to the stores at that day anyway, but I went there a couple of weeks later and found some interesting issues. We have this Rolling Stones EP, 5x5. Five well, this is from 2010, so I guess this isn't really a record store day issue, not of this year anyway. Uh, it's mono, it's If You Need Me, Empty Heart, uh, 21st, 20th uh, South Mich Michigan Avenue, Confessing the Blues and Around and Around. Very nice issue. <clears throat> and it's on the ABKCO label, although it looks like a blue deck label, but it isn't. Then we have the Bob Dylan issue here. Wigwam and Thirsty Boots, 
and this is a record store day issue I'm quite sure of that on the Columbia label the wigwam unreleased demo not that impressive really but I like the version of um, Eric Anderson's thirsty boots very nice then we have some oversized reissue EP <laughs> uh, too with the animals the animals there <laughs> the animals is here with well Hans of the Rising Sun and the animals are back and these are EPs 10 inch EPs uh, on ABK CO as well although the, uh, the labels look as if they were Columbia labels because I guess they were released in Columbia initially I'm not sure about that but I'm quite sh I think so so nice uh, then we have a 10 inch fantasy uh, LP called Shader Trio Swings the Thing um, and this is issue on the show is quite nice sorry on the orange vinyl There's some nice reissues here. Mm -hmm. So I have some more plays. Oh yeah, I'm not doing it with that. Yeah. <coughs> then we have another record store day issue, Waltz for Debbie, Monica Setterlund and Bill Evans. This is considered as probably one of the best Swedish jazz albums, vocal jazz albums of all time. And Definitely the the best Monica Setlund album. She even says this is her favorite, and it didn't sell at all. And she had big problems getting Phillips to agree with this recording, with together with with Bill Evans and his trio. Uh, he she even finally said, "Well, okay, then I I'll make sure the recording is done by myself, and then I'm never ever again going to record anything for Phillips." And they then they said, "All right, all right, do the recording." But it sold poorly when it was issued. But today it's one of the really holy grails of of uh, Swedish jazz albums, and it's extremely expensive every time it turns up. So now they decided to. Well, it has been reissued. Well, s couple, well, several times. First time a couple of years later on Sonora. Uh, and then in the early 70s, I've got that early 70s issue, and it was issued on CD, well, has been issued on CD seven, several times as well, so you can get hold of these recordings, but the original uh, LP is very difficult. So, anyway, this is a heavy uh, reissue on Universal, and it does, well, it has a Philips label, but it, instead of uh, it saying Philips at the top, it says Monica Setterlund. So. But yeah, I have to tell you, I found I found this or the original one in a record store in Stockholm some well some years ago, and I watched the the uh, and I saw it. Oh, this is amazing! And then I saw the price, and it was incredibly cheap. I can't remember now exactly how how cheap it was, um, but let's let's say for argument's sake. Let's say it cost fifty, and then and I thought, oh, it must be in horrible condition. And then when I watched it, no, it was in mint condition. And then I looked again at the at the price tag. It didn't say fifty; it said five thousand. Yeah, that's life. <laughs> uh, okay, this is not a record store issue either. It's the Rolling Stones, Hot Rocks, nineteen sixty four to nineteen seventy one on the ABKCO label um, another record that was issued together with all the other 60s issues uh, and I had that before I didn't have this strangely enough but now I have and it's a compilation it's the best 60s tunes and early 70s uh, this is n not a record store day uh, issue either. It's uh, Reservoir Dogs, the original motion picture soundtrack with music by, well, we got the Swedish group Blue Swede, Uka Chaka, Hooked on a Feeling. Well, <laughs> to get back to Jonathan King, Jonathan King made the original 
arrangement that uh, Blue Swede uh, nicked note by note and had a the big hit with. I, I'm, I've seen some comments about um, Jonathan King not being too happy about that. Um, uh, and there's some some stuff spoken from the movie as well. Oh, all right, let's finish that. Sorry. Um, yeah, we got Little Green Bag, George Baker Selection, a really cool song. And well, we have Harry Nilsson, we have Bedlam, we have Joe Tex. Uh, we have several short snippets of dialogue spoken by Stephen Wright, uh, and it's on white vinyl, so it's a very appealing to the eye as well. So I can show you if you haven't seen it already. But it, uh, it's a uh, it's a great movie. We can't really leave that fact. Um, looks like this. Something like that. Yep. Uh, all right. Uh, I've got only only two more issues to show, and neither of them are really record store day issues. I think uh, this is David Bowie's first uh, album, uh, debut album. It's a reissue, obviously. Well, not obviously, but it is. It's a reissue from 2010, and uh, it's on Deram. And what's uh, funny about this is uh, that it's a double album. So you got both the mono version of the album and the stereo version of the album with the right um, colored uh, Deram labels, of course. <sighs> Yeah, and then finally, an uh, album that I bought on auction quite recently. Uh, an old CD favorite of mine, Johnny Cash. The first uh, American records, uh, American recordings um, issue from 1994. Uh, I've got, <clears throat> well, I haven't got Unchained, but I got every volume from three and, 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 and four, five, six, and how many other? Six, I think, uh, on vinyl. Um, so I, I, I was very happy to find this. I've been listening to the CD so many times. I think, in my view, this is Johnny Cash's best album. Best album. Um, not that impressive with the pr uh, pressing quality of this. And I'm not sure whether this is some, if, whether this is the original issue or if it's some sort of later reissue. I, um, hmm. Haven't no, I don't know. I probably can find out if I want to. Um, also, the B side of this album is a bit uh, um, badly centered, so not a big deal. But but I, I'm I'm happy to have it. I'm happy to have it unless uh, well uh, I'll keep it until I find a better copy. Um, and it's definitely playable and listenable. So. That's all for me for this time. <laughs>